Hello, my name is Jennifer and I'm a distance learning student and the MA in Digital Technologies for Language Teaching. Thank you for including me in the postgraduate symposium all the way from Hanoi in Vietnam. It's great to be part of it. In order to facilitate a discussion of my essay, I'd like to invite you into an online meeting room. You can either follow the link at the top of this slide or scan the QR code to join. I'll be in the room live to answer any questions and join in the discussion. If you don't have internet access, the room will remain open after this event, so if you have anything you'd like to ask, um, you can log in at your own convenience. I'll pause here to give you time to join the online meeting room. I wanted to explore the impact of a technology-rich environment on a language learner. Through researching this essay, I came up with a typology investigating four aspects of learner identity learner and teacher, consumer and creator, global and local, online and offline. This typology represents multiple identities which language learners may be inhabiting at any one time. It's not intended to be a definitive list or binary, just a lens through which to view learner experiences. Web-based tools and applications express and shape these multiple identities. Learners must negotiate their way through an unstable learning landscape, altering the way they view and represent themselves. Identity is in constant review and flux, and although some identities might be stable, others are likely to be constantly negotiated and reconstructed. Increased access to new technologies makes it even harder to definitively pinpoint who and where the community of speakers is, of the language of acquisition. Rather than joining face-to-face -face communities, learners are blogging, writing, making videos and using other methods of self-expression, not to integrate into a community, but to communicate who they are to it. Increased internet access allows learners to go beyond autonomy when it comes to their own learning and become the teacher or expert. Teacher-student roles and identities may become reversed, not just in the use of technology, but can be expanded into other domains by technology. Learners do not only teach themselves, but may become teachers for others via the web. Many students have more social media followers and subscribers than teachers have pupils in their career. The internet provides an audience and a critical community previously unattainable for target language input and output. In these communities, the role of the expert is diminished and peer-to-peer -peer communities are maximised. Value should be placed on student-created products as a primary content source. It is feasible to exploit the potential of a learner's language one and also their proficiency in a language two. If the role of the native speaker is becoming less relevant, as quote, quoted in Ryan 2009, then language two speakers can assume the identity of teacher. For students who participate in these online communities, a dual identity leads to additional complexity in their role. To successfully manage this duality, students must have a heightened metalinguistic awareness. If this is in place, then we can see the new meaning of scaffolding, as defined by McLaughlin and Lee, beginning to develop. As a consumer, the language learner can find an immediate connection with authentic material, and the culture is no longer the preserve of those who have the financial means to travel. Apps can adapt their content based on student performance and provide a level of personalised learning impossible for the teacher to replicate. This kind of consumption adds a greater ownership and interactivity to often the more passive skills. King states that when students are engaged in active, actively processing information in such new and personally meaningful ways, they are more likely to remember it and apply it in new situations. This elevated access to consumable resources affects the creator identity of learners. Crowdsourcing of content and ideas minimises the role of the individual in these communities, especially when attributing intellectual copyright, and it's often difficult to convince students of the importance of individual work. A multiplicity of roles, including both consumer and author of information, can lead to a lack of clarity when it comes to academic honesty. High-profile sites such as Wikipedia do not acknowledge authorship in the traditional fashion and provide a differing model of academic in integrity for students. Its impact can be noted in many ways. Students are tempted by online translators and know how to access them. However, they do require the student to know what language they could realistically produce and to avoid literal translation of idiomatic expressions. This engenders a paradoxical situation where language students can simu simultaneously know everything and nothing. Frustration on the part of the teacher and the student can be the result. Teachers often bemoan a lack of originality and it is true that plagiarism is a constant concern amongst the copy-paste generation. 
Generating original ideas is more challenging when in the virtual company of millions rather than the limited environment of a class or school. However, repurposing and re-editing existing content is a form of creation and originality. The generation gap could be a factor in activities such as vidding and writing fan fiction, both potential language two activities, being deemed as unoriginal. To employ Pransky's terms, digital immigrants are evaluating the creativity of digital natives. For many reasons, teachers and students may prefer to keep a professional distance and students may look outside the classroom in order to form real world connections. Social networking has made this more accessible. The days of waiting for letters from pen pals are largely over, replaced with a more instant feedback loop. In addition to this, the learner is required to curate their own personal learning environment, thus replacing the former vertical and hierarchical system. This prismatic system of learning apply in that in addition to building a people-oriented network, the learner can reach beyond the teacher by drawing on a range of tools and applications. Some students would prefer less autonomy, relying more on the traditional teacher-student dynamic, and construction of a personal learning environment does not necessarily facilitate deep understanding. A process of selection and retention or abandonment of notes is required, as the internet is not a static resource. Connection to the self-curated network is prevalent. Devices are becoming smaller, ubiquitous, and a digital extension of the self. Bax defines this ubiquity and integration of personal devices as normalisation in the context of the language classroom. An audience for creative outputs or language ability can be critical, often more so online than in face-to-face -face interactions. If the self that is, is taking these linguistic risks isn't really me, then the potential loss of face will be minimised. The physical representation of an avatar can enhance this separation of bodily self from mental self. Virtual worlds present a ludic aspect to learning as they provide three-dimensional experiences and consequences not possible in the real world. Not all online disinhibition takes place in virtual reality. Online seminars, distance learnings, chat rooms and even activities where students are communicating in the same room via a computer are all arenas for this type of communication. The potential for exploiting this lack of inhibition is an advantage for language 2 learners to put themselves in high-risk, high-gain situations without some of the associated anxiety. While some quieter students may flourish and have benign online behaviours, others often exhibit toxic behaviours online. To conclude, Catru's 1992 model of English language learning depicts the transmission of knowledge as an outward flow from the inner circle, from the centre to the periphery, and as unidirectional, as quoted in Ryan 2009. As 21st century language two learners develop complex and shifting identities, this model of instruction no longer applies and is being replaced by a rhizomatic model of learning. While strong social bonds remain online and offline, the how and why of learning a language two has altered. If we accept that self-representation, not assimilation, is the motivator, then it is useful to look at this self and what this means for the language to learner. Impermanence is a key theme. The terrain learners are in is shifting, and digital expression is nearly always editable. When books are published in paper format, the writer can no longer change their ideas. Digital expression is less permanent in this sense. Blogs, Facebook statuses, profiles and avatars can be updated, modified and erased at will to express new ideas and viewpoints. A dynamic self. The language to learner is more complex than before the integration or introduction of technology into homes and schools. Prensky's digital wisdom can be acquired by teachers and students and should inform the construction of a rhizomatic model of language to acquisition.